Hi, welcome friends. Like my apron? It's a tea towel on the bottom with three pockets and a tea towel up here. I made it myself, you can probably tell, because it's all kind of mismatched, but I like it because it's, it's unique. It's one of a kind, like me, like you. Um, my name is Dusty, if you're new, and this is my channel, Daily Little Affairs. So today we're going to bake one of my favorite cookies. The recipe came from my best friend, Marnie. It's called the pumpkin cookies. Um, I believe she makes hers plain and puts a glaze on them, if I remember right, like a powdered sugar glaze. But I add dark chocolate chips and peanut butter M&Ms to mine. Now, if you're allergic to peanut butter or don't like peanut butter, you can leave the M&Ms out and just do chocolate. If you don't like dark chocolate, you could use white chocolate, you could use milk chocolate, you could use butterscotch chips, cinnamon chips, um, you could do none. You do like her and just have a plain pumpkin cookie and make a glaze. Or you could do nuts if you want to add nuts in yours. So this cookie is very versatile. It has no egg. So if you want to make it and have no egg, no worries. And I'm going to be using my leftover pumpkin from my last recipes. So let's get started. Hi, May May. Hi, Lexi. Hi, Kiki. Ki. You can't see her. She's on the other side of the camera. Wow. Not like she's running the camera, but she's in the dining room while I'm in the kitchen and I can see her and she's giving me the airplane ears. Whoop. Whoop. And scowls. I think it's because she wants outside, but it's too hot. Plus, I have propagated a plant for my daughter, and so it's on the dining room table on the patio, and somebody I know would get on there and chew it if I let her out there, so she has to stay in here away from my daughter's plant. So, anyway, let's get started. We'll start with, we need a fall spatula, a little wood stock. This is one cup of pumpkin. So this might be more than one cup, which means I'll have to think of another recipe to use the rest of my pumpkin in. Maybe I'll add it to some baked oatmeal. You know what, there's not that much left. I'm just gonna put all of it in. There might be a smidge more pumpkin, but that's okay. Next, we need a cup of sugar. And this is a fourth cup measure, so we get four scoops. Kitty, commercial break. Hi, Lexi May May. You like that rug? Key, key, key. Hi. Are you enjoying the rug? Are you gonna come in here with me now? Mix in some of our sugar in our pumpkin. And now to this, we need a teaspoon of salt. And it calls for a teaspoon of cinnamon, which you can use. But I'm going to use pumpkin pie spice, which you could also use. So whatever sounds good to you. If you don't have pumpkin pie spice, just use cinnamon. And if you have pumpkin pie spice, try that. Now to this, we need a teaspoon of baking soda, teaspoon of baking powder. Give this a preliminary mix here. Mm -hmm. Wish you could smell all the spices. It smells amazing. Now to that, we need a cup of Nope, excuse me, a half of a cup of Crisco. Vegetable shortening. Use another fall spatula. I love my Snoopy. A half a cup of shortening, Crisco. You could use, I suppose you could use butter flavored if you have it. I've never really tried the butter flavored. And if you don't get this completely blended, it'll be fine, especially as you add in the flour and mix it. You can certainly use a stand or hand mixer to make sure it's all incorporated. Now we need two cups of flour. 
for my third cup measure, so we're gonna need six scoops. I'm going to go ahead and add the chocolate and the peanut butter with the flour so that it helps distribute better in the cookie. So there's my chips. Couldn't tell you how many. Probably a bag. And then it looks like three-fourths of a pound of peanut butter M&Ms. You could also use regular M&Ms if you wanted to. and a half cup measure so that's one and a half cups I think that's good Let's get these mixed in Lexi's waiting to go outside she don't keep waiting not going out May May too hot and don't want my plant destroyed it's not a salad bar for you See if we can get these on the pan. These are cookies that don't spread a lot either. So you'll kind of want to shape them on the pan. If you have a cookie scoop, that might work. I don't know, they're kind of a sticky cookie too, so it might be a little more challenging. And the oven is set for 375. It'll bake about nine to 11 minutes, pretty much standard for cookies. These are such a fall cookie. I mean, to me, nothing says fall like the pumpkin cookies. Well, honestly, pumpkin everything, right? I know, I know a lot of people, especially with this heater, excited. I am very excited for fall. But then I'm excited every year for fall because it's my favorite season. But yeah, if you're a chocolate peanut butter pumpkin lover, and if you've never had peanut butter with chocolate or with peanut butter, peanut butter with pumpkin. But you like pumpkin and you like peanut butter, I highly encourage you to try this recipe because they marry very well together. It's a very good, yummy recipe. So let's get this in the oven. We'll see how they turn out. And there is the cookies out of the oven. They baked for six minutes and I rotated the pan for another five minutes. Um, that one had a little mishap. That was my fault, but They'll still eat good, even if they're not perfectly shaped. Um, the other thing I would highly recommend is I, on my last pan, I actually ended up putting like wax paper, huh, there's my mail, wax paper down so that they would come up easier off the pan because the M&Ms like to stick to the pan, even with cooking spray. And it did make three dozen, which will last a long time. These are nice, soft cookie. So if you're looking for a crisper cookie, these wouldn't be it. If you like a soft, almost cakey cookie, these would be it. And I wish you could smell them. <sighs> it smells like fall. That's marvelous. Yay. Hi, friends. Welcome to tea time. Now we get to enjoy those cookies. Oh, my gosh. I love them so much. My, my new little mug. Coffee, cookies, and books. Cats, books, coffee. So, yep. My favorite things, except for the coffee. I love it, it just doesn't love me. Goodness, Lenny, what is with you? You think you need attention? Yeah, you poor thing. Anyway, let's give a taste. See the cookies? May not be perfectly shaped, but oh my gosh, so good. Mmm. Mmm. It almost melts in your mouth. There is a crispiness to the outside, but oh no, I have both cats. <laughs> there is a crispiness to the outside, but they're so soft and just like I said, they melt in your mouth. Well, hello, Lexi. Mmm. But you know, I do have to warn you because I know for some people, you have to let them know it has peanut butter in it because they're allergic. You know, it's part of being 
a considerate, conscientious person, that some people are allergic to peanuts. I mean, mm. some people, even just the smell of it is enough to cause a reaction. And as a, a person that cares about other people, I would warn them, you know, hey, there's peanut butter. Or if they've already told me I have a peanut butter allergy, then I wouldn't even put these cookies out or anything so that that way they wouldn't have any kind of chance of having a reaction. I would want to do that to protect them. And as a Christian, there are things that are going on right now that because I love you and care about you, I want to warn you that I don't know if you've ever heard the terms the rapture or the tribulation or the antichrist, you know, end times, people get, that. you know, oh yes, we've heard those before, we've heard that story before, or end times, what are you talking about, another, can, another like crazy theory, cuckoo theory, but because I care about you, I have to say something because I want you to know the possibilities are there that I would feel bad if I had not said anything to be to be aware, to be prepared, to be on the lookout for what's going on because, you know, what kind of person would I be if I knew and I didn't tell you? Or let's say I, I tell you about it and nothing happens and I'm wrong. Well, then you haven't really lost anything, but you're aware. And it just gives you precaution, just like someone saying, you know, hey, I made some cookies, but you can't have any because I, you know, they're gonna have peanut butter. And maybe that person says, "Oh no, 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 no! I'm not allergic to peanut butter. It's no big deal. I'm allergic to coconut." Well, then now you don't feel bad. You can offer them a cookie, but to not tell them and let them have one and then have a reaction, that would just be devastating. And that's how I would feel about not letting you know that there are some things going on in the world that truly could be pointing towards the end times. Um. And when I say end times, maybe for someone that doesn't know or the, the terms are new for, the Bible talks about that at the end of the time that things are going to happen where Jesus will come back and take his bride, the Christians, the people that follow him, that serve him, that seek him, and belong to him. And those that are left will be given kind of in a sense like an ultimatum through the tribulation of follow me or don't follow me. And I know that sounds very... exclusive and I know in society people want to be inclusive but sadly Jesus loves everyone but he leaves the only way is him and so he's very exclusive and he's not saying that no one's welcome or only certain people are welcome he's just saying all are welcome as long as they go through him and if you don't believe that, that's your choice. And if you do believe that, that's your choice. Um, and I'm not saying, you know, it comes down to what you want to choose to believe. Um, pretty heavy topic for cookies. Matt says, the simple inherent folly but the prudent, prudent, which those that are cautious, are crowned with knowledge. Proverbs 14, 18. And I don't want anyone to be crowned with folly. I don't want anyone to inherit folly and destruction and anything like that. But I want everyone to have the knowledge so they can make the decision and be informed for themselves. It's kind of like going to a doctor and you're told, hey, you could have the surgery but these are the pros and these are the cons this is the good and this is the bad and then you can decide for yourself yes i want the surgery no i don't want that surgery or maybe i mean the bible itself talks about the end times and the things that are coming and happening as like birth pains and i don't know if you've ever had a baby or known about someone who's had a baby that you know the labor starts out maybe it's not too bad maybe it's almost manageable maybe it's no big deal and then the pains come heavier and closer and stronger and heavier and closer and stronger until it's very evident that it's about time to have a baby, you know? Well, I think when you look at how things have changed, especially in the last three years, 
it almost feels like that that you know more and more things are just coming and there's more of a squeezing and a tightening and i don't know it just it feels very different and i just want to share that there is hope and if you're looking they can be found and i just don't want you to miss out because i care about you um i'm gonna have another bite of cookie huh Hi, Mei Mei. There's a verse in, Revel in Luke, Luke 21, 28. It says, when these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. So when you see certain things happening, look up because the time is coming. It's just like when, uh, you know, someone's in labor as they get closer and get stronger. The doctor's like, get ready. The baby is almost here. And for me anyway, and a lot of people, it's kind of how it feels right now is that baby's about to come. It's about to give birth. And our hope is near. And I don't want to say any of that to scare anybody or to frighten anybody. And I'll be honest, there was points in my life that that kind of stuff scared me a lot. I mean, I didn't want to talk about it. I ignored it. I pretended it wasn't coming. I didn't want it to come in my lifetime. I wanted to just do what I wanted to do and live the life I wanted to live and not have to think about it and not have to worry about it and not have to wonder would I be one of the ones that would be raptured or left behind. And honestly, there are times as much as I want to live for Christ, I still have that slight worry of, will I be left behind? Because I don't want to be, but I also know I'm not perfect. And I know I fail. I know I sin. I know I'm a hypocrite. I know I, I do all the wrong things. But I repent and I want to be included. I want to be a part of it. So... I share that with you for the same reason, friends, because I want you to be included. I want you to be a part of it. And hey, if I'm wrong, is there anything wrong with living a good, upstanding life in expectation and hope as opposed to not? So, I don't know, things to think about cookies to chew on. These are very... Mm. I love the pops of peanut butter. Mmm. So good. I'll see if I can get the icing recipe from my friend. And I'll give you both options in the description. Without, like mine, or with, like hers. So you can decide for yourself, which way would you like your cookie to go? Kind of like the decision. Which way would you like to choose? To believe and follow? Or to not believe and do your thing? It still always comes back to you. And if you ever have any questions, please feel free to email me. I'll answer them the best I can. I can't say I know all the answers. And the, if you want answers, the Bible has a lot of them. It has all of them, honestly. Sometimes it just takes a while of reading to figure it out. And if you're especially interested in end times, I would recommend reading Daniel and Revelation. And if you read the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus himself talks about it a lot as well. I mean, honestly... I want, I want to say, forget how much percentage of the Bible is prophecy, but a lot of it, 
like I want to say 20% of it or 25% I forget but I know a lot of it is prophecy which I never realized until I heard that somewhere so also something to think about Hmm. Those are so good I could eat like five more. Hmm. So good. Well, thank you friends for listening and I hope I gave you some things to think about. I hope you will think about them and not be offended by the word of God, but just think about it. And you know, if it's not your thing, no worries. Just come for the cookies. So, I still be your friend. Even if you don't want to believe as I do, and you want to do what you want to do, I still will care about you and still pray for you. Because you're a fellow human being and I care about you. And I hope you'll come back for more recipes, even if that's all you want to watch me for. Or estate hauls or my cat's videos, or the room tours, for whatever reason that you come, I'm glad that you do. And just know I care about you, and Jesus loves you, and thanks for coming. Hope you'll come back again. What do you think, Maymay? What? <laughs>